Let's unleash your, your weekly window to the world of business and guide to the good life. Hosted by Mr. Ray Butch Gamboa. Hello to everyone. Welcome to the perfect combination of business and the good life. This is Business and Leisure, your weekly business and lifestyle electronic magazine, where we bring you the week's significant business developments and the current trends in the world of leisure. We are still by our lonesome this week as our sunshine girls are still on a break, which means you left to stay with me for the lifestyle section of our show. All is set for the start of this week's presentation. But before that, allow us to take a short break, but we shall be right back to talk business on BizWatch. The power of Strata. tough? Do you dare to go off-road or off-key? Do you use your great power with great control? With a new Isuzu D-Max, you're tough enough to be unstoppable. And you're tough enough to be right back. Isuzu D-Max, tough enough for anything. SML of Asia is inviting you all to witness the most magical and spectacular Christmas parades in the country. The Grand Festival of Lights. Catch your favorite Santa's magical friends Leo the Lion, Cyril the Squirrel, Ellie the Elephant, Benny the Bunny, Jerry the Giraffe, Haley the Hippo, Mackie the Monkey, and Hannah the Panda. Make your way to the North and South Arcades of Esumal of Asia every Saturdays of December, 5.30 p.m. Bring your whole family and friends. Merry Christmas! Welcome back to Business and Leisure and we now start talking serious business on BizWatch, our business section. For our lead issue this week, the Philippines is well on its way to modernizing the Bureau of Customs fully by 2018. The implementing rules and regulations of the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act will be finished and signed by next year, according to the Department of Finance. Our business reporter Andre Ko has the story. 42 of the draft Customs Administrative Orders have already been posted in the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act microsite, and 8 of these have already been signed. This was revealed by Finance Undersecretary Antoinette Tionko. Because of the heavy volume of the Modernization and Tariff Act, which runs to about 200 pages, the Finance Department broke down the memorandum orders issued by the Bureau of Customs on a per-topic basis. The public may access the draft Customs Administrative Orders through the Department of Finance website, which allows the public to comment and give their own inputs, according to Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez. These are some of the Customs Administrative Orders already issued by the Bureau of Customs. The establishment of the Authorized Economic Operators Program, the clearance of postal items, Customs clearance of accompanied or unaccompanied baggage of travelers and crew. Conditionally, tax or duty exempt importation of returning residents or OFWs. Consolidated shipment of duty and tax free balik buying boxes. Imported goods with the minimum value and not subject to taxes and duties. Our Biswatch correspondent has more of the story. Meanwhile, among those still under study are the following Goods under the Customs Bonded Warehousing System Customs Transit in the Customs Territory Compulsory Acquisition Outsourcing of Non-Sovereign Customs 
function to private entities, and rewards to persons instrumental in the actual collection of additional revenues. The DOF is still also studying the assignment and reassignment and designations of Bureau of Customs Personnel, Customs Container, Control Division, Customs Facilities and Warehouses, and Security to guarantee payment of duties and taxes. There is still so much that the BOC and the Department of Finance have to carefully study before the Customs Administrative Orders are finally signed and released. Pending are the accredited information processors, custom service fees, onboard couriers, temporary storage of goods, registration of importers, express shipments, cargo manifests, and seizure and forfeiture proceedings. The Customs Modernization and Tariff Act was signed into law in May 30, 2016 to facilitate trade, cut red tape and corruption, and generally improve the delivery of the Bureau's services. You can email your inquiries or comments on the IRR to cmta.irr.pmo at customs.gov.ph. Meanwhile, there is no doubt that we incur very heavy importations of many consumer products. One of the most heavily imported products is medicines and Trade and Industry Secretary Ramon Lopez hopes to have these manufactured here. Here's our BizWatch correspondent Heidi Santos with the details. If Trade and Industry Secretary Ramon Lopez would have his way, the Philippines may possibly not be such a heavy importer of too many consumer products. The Trade Secretary is targeting multinational companies to make the Philippines their production hub in the region. Secretary Lopez announced this at the recent Manufacturing Summit 2017. Secretary Lopez believes that there are brands or products that can be manufactured here. Initial consultations have already been made with some of these multinational companies. The government is wooing them to put up plants here so that these products can be sourced locally by Filipinos. Aside from this, this will generate more jobs and improve the country's capability to produce products that we have been importing for several years. More details from our BizWatch correspondent. For now, the Department of Trade and Industry is studying the possible incentives, technical assistance, and shares services. The Trade Secretary is not partial to fiscal incentives of tariffs but would rather go for research and development, equipment, and shared services. Because of our heavy dependence on imported medicines, which are a big burden to our citizens, the DTI hopes to start with the pharmaceuticals industry. The Philippines imports a lot of medicines from India because these are much cheaper there. If manufactured in the Philippines, these medicines will be made more readily available for Filipinos at a much cheaper cost, according to Secretary Lopez. Making the Philippines as a production hub for many Consumer products like pharmaceuticals is indeed a good move on the part of the DTI. We hope this will materialize soon. We will now take a short break, but be back shortly with more current and relevant business issues for you. Please stay with us. When you sweat to be sweet and you clean our sea. It's love. it's love when you try to look cool, but you look like a fool. Money more, money it's money love. Money it's love. It's love. Show your love with the new features of the all-new Innova. Love the journey. Happiness. Happiness times seven. The all-new Honda Mobilio. Ease of use. Flexible interior for your various needs. Convenient features. Advanced technology. Powerful engine. Fuel efficient for a smooth journey. And sleek design for you. The all-new Honda Mobilio.
all of Asia is inviting you all to witness the most magical and spectacular Christmas parades in the country. The Grand Festival of Lights. Catch your favorite Santa's magical friends Leo the Lion, Cyril the Squirrel, Ellie the Elephant, Benny the Bunny, Jerry the Giraffe, Haley the Hippo, Mackie the Monkey, and Hannah the Panda. Make your way to the North and South Arcades of Esumal of Asia every Saturdays of December, 5.30 p.m. Bring your whole family and friends. Merry Christmas! Welcome back and you're still on Business and Leisure's BizWatch, our business section. For this next business issue, joint anti-smuggling units are set to be formed by the Bureau of Customs in coordination with the Bureau of Internal Revenue. This is in compliance with the directive of the Department of Finance. Our BizWatch correspondent Andre Cole files this report. All district directors of the Bureau of Customs were directed by customs collector Isidro La Peña to form the joint anti-smuggling units in their respective areas in coordination with the Bureau of Internal Revenue. The customs chief is targeting airing importers brokers and BOC personnel after the Department of Finance issued orders to intensify anti-smuggling efforts, especially in the provinces or regions. Most of the illicit trade happens outside Metro Manila, so DOF Secretary Carlos Dominguez directed Customs Chief La Peña and BIR Commissioner Cesar Dulay to focus on rice, fuel, steel and cigarettes, food and agricultural products like chicken, Onions and garlic will also be carefully watched. More from our BizWatch correspondent. One of the most recent interceptions made by the Bureau of Customs, where it seized 25 million pesos worth of smuggled goods from several shipments, these contained agricultural products, liquor, auto, and aircraft parts. The Bureau also seized 18 luxury vehicles with a total value of 108 million pesos, but which were undervalued at only 32 million pesos. These two interceptions happen at the Manila International Container Port. Customs Chief La Peña has instituted changes in the Bureau to curb corruption. Among these is the one assessment, no sectioning policy to erase the Palakasan and Suki system. Previously, the Bureau's assessment division was divided into 15 sections per commodity. He is also implementing the anti-fixer campaign at the Customs Accounts Management Office. Customs Collector La Peña has already relieved or reassigned 116 customs personnel under his one-strike policy. Included here are 10 district collectors, and because of these measures, the Bureau collected 42 billion pesos in October alone, the highest in the Bureau's history. The ports of Manila, Batangas, and Manila International Container Port also registered their highest collection rates during this period. In September of this year, collection reached 40.26 billion pesos also a big improvement from the monthly average collection of 35 billion pesos. At the top of his to-do list at the Bureau is to weed out corruption, and this he intends to do by removing the TARA system and implementing the no-gift, no-take policy. Lifestyle checks will also be done on customs personnel. Customs Collector La Peña has a five-point program. Aside from stopping corruption and increasing revenues, he intends to facilitate trade, strengthen anti-smuggling efforts, and enhance personal incentives, the reward system, and compensation benefits for BOC personnel. And now for our final business issue this week, House Bill Number 6579, which is the Act establishing a national policy on ease of doing business, is now in its third and final reading. The Chairman of the House Committee on Trade and Commerce and Industry, Representative Ferginel G. Biron of the 4th District of Iloilo is pushing for its final approval. Heidi Santos, our business reporter, has the details. Iloilo 4th District Congressman Ferginel G. Biron said that once the House of Representatives approves House Bill No. 6579, an act establishing a national policy on ease of doing business, the Philippines will create a business environment attractive to investors. The bill provides a mechanism that will make possible the expeditious approval of business permits and licenses. It will also establish a synergy between the national government and the local government units on the issuance of regulations. 
Congressman Biron, the bill's author, said that the goal is to cut down the documentation procedures and the waiting time for applications for business permits. With this bill, approval and release of business permits will become automatic after 30 days provided that all the necessary documents have been submitted. A maximum processing time of one working day for barangay governments, three working days for simple applications, and 10 working days for complex applications from the receipt of the application and complete documents are also provided in the bill. There are certain types of applications that require technical evaluation and the maximum processing time prescribed for this in the bill is 30 working days. This bill seems to be what the country needs for ease of doing business. If a government unit or agency fails to comply with the prescribed timelines, the application is deemed automatically approved. And with that, we end another edition of BizWatch. We shall pause for another break and when we come back, we'll have the Strictly Business segment of Business and Leisure. Please stay with us. automobile enthusiasts. Autofocus.com.ph is exclusive to the automobile where you'll find reviews on the latest brand new car models together with their head-to-head -head comparisons. It has the detailed specs of car models available in the country and their latest SRPs and special promos together with the latest auto industry news and developments like car launches and test drives. Autofocus.com.ph is all about automobiles. Click on Malavasia is inviting you all to witness the most magical and spectacular Christmas parades in the country. The Grand Festival of Lights. Catch your favorite Santa's magical friends Leo the Lion, Cyril the Squirrel, Ellie the Elephant, Benny the Bunny, Jerry the Giraffe, Haley the Hippo, Mackie the Monkey, and Hannah the Panda. Make your way to the North and South Arcades of Esimolavesha every Saturdays of December, 5.30 p.m. Bring your whole family and friends. Merry Christmas! Welcome back and you're still on BNL's business section and what we have next is our Strictly Business segment. Welcome to BNL's segment for the Filipino small and medium-sized entrepreneurs. This is Strictly Business. This week, we have two sisters who discovered their common passion that led them to abandon their professions to go full-time entrepreneurs. This is the wide range of cosmetics and beauty products of Skin Potions Cosmetic and beauty products. At first glance, they do not look like most of our locally made products because of the excellent packaging and eye-catching names. And sister Jonalyn corroborates this story. Ako kasi sobrang hinagos sa makeup. 
So I, when, whenever I see a lot of makeup in the market, when it's good packaging, then I'll buy it. So I said to my sister, why not? Why stick to only skincare? Why not? I know offer other like cosmetics, you know. So we we came up with, uh, kaya naging skin potions, ano siya, um, uh, cosmetics, uh, skin potions, skincare, and cosmetic products, ano siya. Meet Eileen Season, a co-owner of Skin Potions. You will get to meet the other half a little bit later. Eileen used to be a flight stewardess for PAL and Etihad Airways and flew for nine years before the entrepreneurial bug bit her. Her sister, Jonalyn, actually started the company. Nagkaroon kasi siya ng problem sa skin. So she came up with uh, soaps and uh, all that. And um, of course, together with me, kasi we're like uh, partners in crime. So we're like, what, what do you have? Okay, let's try it on. Okay, and then why not sell it? So it started there. Then from 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 that, sa kakikaya namin dalawa, we came up with okay, why not this packaging? Why not that? And then boom, one day, um, we got surprised that we have skin potions na. Actually, I, I am a nurse, and um, uh, I started to be curious at the skincare world. Uh, like start to actually no sobrang dami kong breakouts before and then uh, eventually nagana pa ako ng cure for that and then I tried uh, many dermatologist clinic uh, also international and uh, local brands pero nothing worked for me not until uh, my sister my, my, my sister's friend which is also a flight attendant before uh, offered me a honey oatmeal so the honey oatmeal cured my my breakout and then and then I just, I just like uh, came out with like, bakit hindi ko start na sarili ko negosyo? Kasi sa akin effective, but hindi ako tumulong sa ibang nangangailangan din. That time kasi, uh, the local skincare is not really that hype. Hindi siya ganun ka-hype. Hindi siya nire-rave, ganyan. So, so, it was a challenge for me na parang, okay, sige, gawin natin to, try natin. And then I started offering it to my friends family and then relatives and then yung mga friends na, na nakagamit which is naging effective din sa kanila. According to Jonalyn, she did not have a problem with marketing the products from the start. Her friends who tried her products offered to be her resellers when the products they tried worked well for them. So, how did skin potions actually start? first product that we launched namin is way back 2013. We started with our, we call it premium soaps. So we have gluta soaps, we have triple whitening soap, composed of uh, like six to seven soaps in the beginning. Um, then uh, we used to sell them online. So, and then after that we had lotions, creams, and body peeling, even be uh, before for um, actually, it was chemical based before. Um, then we have we have a, we had own plenty of um, selections na rin before. Um, from chemical based, we jumped to um, organic based and natural based products. So now, um, fino formally for us yung mga yung mga products namin with our manufa manufacturer, and then we own the formulation. So as you can see in the market, na nasa market right now, na sinasal namin, um, we may have our um, the same name pro product name, but we will have our own firm formulation for each of them. With a global trend towards organic or at least natural products, the two sisters couldn't have made a better choice. The market, especially the younger set, embraced their products wholeheartedly. As we can see naman sa market, we have plenty of choices naman ng ating consumers. So from soaps then, we, we said, so why, why we should stick to only like soap whitening soaps in the beginning? Um, why stick to that? We have um, a lot to offer to our customers. So we thought of, why not skincare? Um, sa face, body. So we thought of um, uh, skincare beauty products that would cater for every Filipina needs needs nila from kumbaga from head to foot the body scrub like the creams so we come up with we came up with um, the cream sleeping cream mask 
So um, our manufacturer form formulated for us such. Then we try it. Then we we uh, we tried it for ourselves. And then it, it, it really really works. Like nagulat kami parang ang ganda ganda ng skin eh. in the morning ganyan. From starting out just four years ago, they have developed quite a long range of cosmetics and beauty products. Meron na tayong package, parang medyo kompleto na yung lineup, ganon. So, um, ayon, marami na kami. Actually, 54 na yung product na namin. They also have something for scars and pimple marks that soothes and lightens called Magic Balm. Because we have so many products in the market now, eh, parang from Korea, from Thailand. So, of course, we um, uh, try to, uh, we try to, ano naman kung ano with the market, especially sa atin. So, affordable siya. Um, sa soaps kasi, for as low as 150, meron ka ng soap. Um, sa, mga, um, sa mga creams naman namin, mga 300, 300 to 400 pesos, which is a very, very reasonable price na in the market right now. Starting out just four years ago, it is actually an amazing feat for the two sisters to have developed so many product lines and four kiosks all in SM in just a short period. Like many startups, they started out in the bazaars. Looking back, uh, it, it was really hard for us to be in the bazaars. Like you gotta expend, uh, like you gotta spend uh, uh, twenty-five to thirty thousand for a bazaar space for three days. And then, nung una, bisuwar sabi namin, di kaya mabawiin. Pero that time, we were really aggressive, and we want to, we want the market to know that there is an existing brand that is really effective and that is low cost. So from from the on, nagbazar kami every month. And then bare months yun eh. And then uh, by January, nag started kami all, again na online. Ganya hanggan nakilala siya by our resellers and distributors. Up to now, they still look back at how all those bazaars helped launch their products in the local market. In fact, up to now, they still participate in bazaars even if they already have their kiosks. Our first guest is in SM Bacoor, which is the nearest to our place, to our office, because kasi taga Cavite kami. And then the next one is the SM North, uh, SM Mega Mall, and then another existing is SM Fairview. Fortunately, yung demand lumalaki siya ngayon. That's why we need to branch out as soon as possible. And like many others, the idea of franchising also came to them. In all of the bazaars they participated in, many of their customers would ask them if they were open to franchising. Sabi namin, why not, why not franchise? Diba? So from that, uh, from there, so nagtanong-tanong kami kung paano magka-franchise. Nagpa-under kami ng uh, legal entity dito ng uh, private company sa Philippines, under Front Corp ng franchising. Yes. And then silang tumulong sa amin, sila nag-assist sa amin to have our uh, to have our yeah, our brand franchise. They will soon open new kiosks in SM Batangas, SM Bacolod, and Robinson's Tugigarao. We always want to, we always look for a franchise, you know, hindi lang dahil may pera, ganyan, pwede ka na mag-franchise. No, we, we, we really take into consideration yung, yung talagang passion niya, kung anong gusto niyang gawin. Hindi mo na maasikas on skin potions if you have a lot of business to do. So, what we always do is to background investigate, uh, also to, to look into their files, ganyan, para malaman namin kung talagang uh, willing and passionate ka talaga to work with us. That is Jonalyn's honest criterion for her possible franchisees. Apart from the capacity to come up with the initial investment, of course. Medyo malaki, pero from the start, uh, I'll share you with my capital. No? The capital is like 5,000 pesos. It all started with 5,000 pesos. And for now, yung mga orders namin for the bulk, kasi we have a lot of uh, branches na, and then we have a lot of branches coming out soon, like four here in, uh, in December. So, uh, so yung apat na branch na yun, so kailangan talaga malaki yung mga order namin ngayon. So, malaki talaga nilalabas ng capital every now and then. 
Things are starting to look much brighter for skin potions. And the challenge for Jonalyn and Eileen is to step up and slowly increase the local awareness for their product lines. They originally targeted the millennials, this generation that seems to be quite fixated on cosmetics and beauty products. However, the parents of these millennials are also now their clients, so word of mouth has really gotten around. And her advice to would-be entrepreneurs? At first, uh, you should know your passion. Kailangan alam yung ginagawa mo sa... Kailangan uh, alam mo pala kung ano yung gusto mong gawin sa buhay mo. Uh, number two, you always pray to God uh, because without God, everything is not, uh, everything is uh, with with God, everything is possible. And then thirdly, you should know your market. Uh, kailangan alam mo yung brand mo, kailangan magitiwala ka sa brand mo, and also kailangan alam mo kasi niyib na mo. And fourth, I think is never stop, never give up. So if you're still on the uh, starting line, don't stop. It's like pursue your passion and make your life worth living. The Skin Potions products are so pretty, they are actually eye candies for ladies. Check out the different variants of soaps and the catchy names they came up with like Watermelon Pop and Melon Berry and Acne Pie Soap. They have Aloe Vera and this interesting lip balm called Sorbet Lip Scrub, which is made from strawberries and raw sugar. One is supposed to scrub this lightly on the lips for fuller lips before scrubbing the raw sugar off. Here is Eileen with her more personal invitation for you. Hello everyone, we would like to invite um, our dear customers to visit our kiosk. We are located in SM North Edsa, SM Mega Mall, SM Bacoor, and uh, SM Fairview. And also we will have our franchising, uh, franchising kiosk soon. Um, in SM Bacolod. That, that, that would be our fr first franchise kiosk. And um, we are open actually for franchise. Any franchising queries, please contact us at, on Instagram at Skin Potions. And lastly, we'll have our bazaar. Um, it will be in SMX MOA on December 21 to 23. That will be Trendsetters Bazaar. So we are inviting everyone to come and join us and see you there. And more surprises are coming your, uh, your way. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed our feature on Skin Potions, this week's feature on Strictly Business. Join us again next time for more interesting features that I'm sure many of you, especially the would-be entrepreneurs, would enjoy. That ends the business section of Business and Leisure. The lifestyle part of the show will commence after this short break. Stay with us. Malavasia is inviting you all to witness the most magical and spectacular Christmas parades in the country, the Grand Festival of Lights. Catch your favorite Santa's magical friends Leo the Lion, Cyril the Squirrel, Ellie the Elephant, Benny the Bunny, Jerry the Giraffe, Haley the Hippo, Mackie the Monkey, and Hannah the Panda. Make your way to the North and South Arcades of Esumalavasia every Saturdays of December, 5.30 p.m. Bring your whole family and friends. Merry Christmas!
This is Business and Leisure and may we welcome you now to the second equally important part of our weekly presentation, The Leisure Report, your weekly guide to the good life. Malavesha officially opened its annual The Grand Festival of Lights last November 25, 2017 at the Asa Malavesha North Arcade. Six beautiful floats decked with colorful dancing lights paraded as mall goers, especially children, were very happy watching the parade. So we have an annual event here in Esamolavesha that the public really goes to and that's called the Moa Grand Festival of Lights Parade. So we do this starting the last Saturday of November all the way to Christmas including Christmas Day. So we have for this year six, uh, six shows, six days no? and uh, the public is all invited to come and watch all the lighted floats, the dancers, the mascots. Uh, it's just a wonderful event. Seen with these beautiful floats are Christmas dancers and characters with glowing costumes all prancing to your favorite holiday tunes. Santa's magical friends are also present to add more festivity to the event. They are Leo the Lion, Cyril the Squirrel, Ellie the Elephant, Benny the Bunny, Jerry the Giraffe, Haley the Hippo, Mackie the Monkey and Hannah the Panda. So this year what we've done different is the fact that uh, we've created special friends of Santa's and, uh, the mascots that are part of the whole program. No? They're part of the story of the parade. So that's something exciting to watch. Staying true to its promise to being the best destination for families and friends this Christmas season, SM Alavesha has so much in store for the whole weekend of December, like Santa meet and greet and the spectacular fireworks display. I'm inviting everybody out there watching to come and witness the MOA Grand Festival of Lights Parade here in SM Olavesha. That happens every Saturday until Christmas Day, including Christmas Day. So, I uh, hope to see you soon. This year is the ninth staging of the SM Olavesha, the Grand Festival of Lights. Dubbed as the most anticipated holiday tradition with the biggest, the brightest and most magical Christmas parade. Don't forget to catch the Grand Festival of Lights Parade at the SM Mall of Asia every Saturday of December. I'm sure the whole family, especially your kids, will surely enjoy this magical show. We move on now to our favorite segment, Places. And this week, our roving crew goes back to Capitolio in Pasig, wherein they discovered another interesting restaurant. Well, let's all find out. Edmark Bustos, a native of Baguio City, is a nurse by profession. He took up nursing at the time when it seemed to be a lucrative profession for Pinoy's who dreamt of making it big in America, where there was a big demand for nurses. But when he graduated, there was already a glut of nurses abroad and nursing jobs were scarce, especially in the U.S., where he stayed for a while searching for a job. This was where he was able to rediscover his real passion. When I was a kid, I was really exposed in cooking. Um, home cooking lang naman. Tapos, um, when I was in high school already, I know what I want already. Kaya lang nung sabi ng, ng tatay ko, nung sinabi ko, 16, ano gusto mo? Gusto ko mag-culinary. Kaya lang sabi ng tatay ko, mahal ang, 
mahal mag culinary, kutsilyo pa lang, mahal na. So, um, that time naman, marami rin akong na-meet ng mga titos, titas, ng mga nurses na very successful sa states. They have their own um, car, Mercedes, dalawang bahay. So, I found an opportunity through that. Uh, oh, sige, kunin ko na lang. Um, I'll work as a, as a nurse. Bilis lang, malaki kita. So, $25 an hour. So, by the time, 5 years, malaki na ipon ko, makakabukas ako ng sarili ng restaurant. But by the time na nag-graduate ako, naipasa ko yung USRN ko. Laos na pala, ang dami na. Overproduction of nurses. So, every now and then, pupunta ako kung saan. Nakikitira ako sa bahay. So, maraming mga kamag-anak, maraming akong kaibigan. Nakikitira ako. Ako yung tutulong magluto. So, actually, it's, it's, ano eh, it's a journey din kung nasaan ako ngayon. It's a journey na um, dahil sa marami akong places na napuntahan, marami kaming places na nabisita, marami din akong natikman. Some of his friends who took him and his young wife into their homes had stacks of cookbooks. He had time in his hands, so Edmark whipped up dishes from whatever could be found in the refrigerator. Napagka nakikitira ako sa bahay ng mga kaibigan noon sa States, kung ano yung laman ng ref nila, mag-create ako ng food for them. So doon na, doon na nagsimula. Tapos pagbalik ko dito, sobrang hirap, dumating ako sa point na Um, final option ko is to do fix marriage. Oh, girlfriend ko na yung asawa ko. Girlfriend ko siya before. Tapos, do fix marriage in order for me to get a job. But he didn't end up doing that. Instead, he went back home and opened a small dining place with a takeout counter and a very lean staff of four. Sobrang low budget, no? um, mga kahoy, mahirap maghanap ng kahoy. So, sinetap lang namin na ganun. So, hindi namin ina-expect dahil nga siguro, gate lang ng Baguio, word of mouth. Um, dinagsa kami. Dinagsa kami sa DPS. Unfortunately, he was forced to close his small restaurant because the other residents were complaining about the growing traffic in the residential area. He found another space that measured only 100 square meters. Friends and family donated tables and monoblock chairs to help him get started. And then, he was well on his way. Bawat kita, invest. Bawat kita, invest. Doon din namin yung mural namin na design. Nakikita dito kung yung mural namin doon. Yung design na yun, it was donated also by our regular customer na artist. After only six months, customers started pouring in and slowly, Edmark started growing his operations with more personnel, none of whom had any culinary background. Word of mouth combined with dedication and passion got the ball rolling for Edmark. Amare la Cucina, the name he chose for his restaurant, literally means love the kitchen in Italian. He specializes in great Italian food with no culinary background at all. His success in the kitchen is nothing short of amazing. Graduated um, at YouTube, YouTube University. Amare La Cucina did so well in Baguio City, where residents and visitors line up every day just to get a table that he knew he found his niche. This one in Barangay Capitolio is now his second branch. We were surprised na ang dami naming customers na, para, na taga rito na umakit sa Baguio at pumila sila. Um, most of them are saying na they are very thankful na they don't need to go up to Baguio and fall in line in, it, in, our, um, in our branch. This is probably because he made the Amare La Cucina a great dining experience. For the first time, you can make your own pizza. For the first time, our pizza makers will teach you to toss the dough, put the toppings, cook in the oven, look at it for two minutes, tapos okay na. We offer um, 
Neapolitan pizzas. We have ribs, wood fired ribs, which is also cooked in the oven. We have chicken Thai fillets. And then, of course, we have wonderful salads na um, Baguio Baguio greens na sinaserve din dito, and even for pasta. And we even um, have our famous dessert pizzas. We have our Nutella pizza and roasted marshmallow speculous pizza. Sellers, we have for the pizza, we have our foie gras with truffle oil pizza. Um, we have um, our three cheese tray for Maggi pizza. We have our wood fired ribs. Our salad, yung Marian special. Of course, galing si sister ko. Favorite ko siya. Uh, and then for the pastas, we have um, crispy bacon ala arabiata pasta. We have ala sardines pasta. There are now quite a few Italian restaurants in town and Edmark knew he had to make a difference. Most of these Italian restaurants have the right ambiance, the right food offerings. But Edmark's Amare la Cucina offers something more than just the food. They are offering a unique dining experience as well. These kids are having the time of their lives doing pizza from scratch. A pizza expert is always on hand to guide them every step of the way. At least wala silang oras na parang di ba mag iPad sila. So may time sila to tapos syempre may sense of ownership na. So dalawa lang ang reaction lagi ng mga bata. Ang reaction nila is pag nagawa nila is i-share nila kasi ginawa nila or hindi sila lang daw uubos kasi ginawa nila. <laughs> Here, this pizza maker expertly throws up the dough to show the kids and us how to do it right. So, nagsimula kami yung story din naman ng pizza making na ganyan. Hindi talaga siya kasama. Kasi nagsimula siya parang before kami nagsimula, mag-open. Siguro more than 100 pizzas na luto muna namin. Napakain namin sa mga kaibigan. Nagsimula yun doon sa isang friend namin na may na anak niya, na inaanak ko rin. Mahilig mag-bake. So sumama siya, nakipag, ano, gumawa ng pizza. So super happy. Tapos every time may mga bata ino-offer namin, gustong gusto. So parang nagdun na namin doon na, na siya nag-amoy cheese. <laughs> After spreading the sauce on the prepared pizza dough and topping it with the cheese, it's time to bring it into the brick oven. Yung sa amin is Neapolitan pizza. So high heat. Nasa 900 degrees yan. Nasa 900 degrees. May pagka smoky siya. What is great about having such a large oven is one can pop in so many other dishes as well like these juicy, tender ribs which Ed Mark says was his dad's idea. What is also surprising is how fast a pizza can cook. Ah, uh, mabilis lang. Uh, kasi nga 'di ba, parang kanina ko nikwento ko sa iyo, naging idol na, na naging idol ko si Jamie Oliver. Yung pinaka first na in love. So pati yung noodles, by the time na pumasok ka, doon lang namin lulutuin yung noodles, pati yung sauce. Pati itong mga 'to. Kasi mabilis lang talaga. Fresh. Well, not a pre wow. After two to three minutes, the pizza can be taken out of the oven, the cheese bubbling and the crust crispy on the edges. The best part of the pizza is the crust. Kaya yung kaya yung banat yung banat ng kaibigan ko uh, na pangasawa niya. Pizza ka ba? Okay. Kasi crust kita. <laughs> the sense of humor is just part of the fun that Edmark injects into the Amare la Cucina dining experience. And here, Edmark has prepared a spread of Amare la Cucina's best sellers. Pizza ba nakangiti? Pag nakasimangot, hindi masarap. She taught me the trial and error. Tignan po, ito yung kinalabasan. <laughs> 
Amare La Cucina can accommodate as many as 160 hungry diners, and the place is open for events as well. With the success of his two restaurants, Edmark hopes to open one in Clark and perhaps in San Juan La Union in the very near future. For residents in the metro, your best bet for now is this one in Barrio Capitolio. We are located in front of the Church of Mary Immaculate Church of Capitolio. Um, we would let you try for the first time to toss the pizza and make your own pizza and watch it literally to be cooked in our wood room. See you! Don't forget to visit Amare La Cucina in Barangay Capitolio in Pasig City and check out all those delectable food we have just featured. There's more coming up right after we pause for another short break. Be right back. Think you're tough? Do you dare to go off-road or off-key? Do you use your great power with great control? With a new Isuzu D-Max, you're tough enough to be unstoppable. And you're tough enough to be right back. Isuzu D-Max, tough enough for anything. Motoring Today is now on the web. Watch this episode or other past episodes of the country's longest running motoring program any time of the day by logging on to our website, motoringtoday.ph. Motoring Today is now online. Just the click away. SM All of Asia is inviting you all to witness the most magical and spectacular Christmas parades in the country. The Grand Festival of Lights. Catch your favorite Santa's magical friends Leo the Lion, Cyril the Squirrel, Ellie the Elephant, Benny the Bunny, Jerry the Giraffe, Haley the Hippo, Mackie the Monkey, and Hannah the Panda. Make your way to the North and South Arcades of SM All of Asia every Saturdays of December, 5.30 p.m. Bring your whole family and friends. Merry Christmas! Welcome back and here now is our What to Enjoy and Wear as you take your weekly leisure trip for our recommended leisure destinations. Check these out. Here now is our weekly list of highly recommended leisure destinations. Be it fine dining, romantic garden wedding, or a relaxed meal of excellent dishes, the name Ilustrado comes to mind. It's one of the few places that serve the best paella in town. Ilustrado, located within the walled city of Intramuros. The Highlands Prime Steakhouse is indeed the prime dining destination where you can enjoy the best of prime steak. The Highland Prime Steakhouse serves nothing but U.S. Angus prime beef. And the Highlands Prime Steakhouse also serves an array of prime gourmet dishes like the squid ink pasta, topped with a whole prawn of their delectable sea bass that's always juicy and served with mashed potato and a wedge of lemon. And their breads and cakes are baked fresh every day. The Highlands Prime Steakhouse is at the SM Mall of Asia, and that's where you should have your next lunch, dinner, or intimate party. Steak lovers from north of the metro can also enjoy the juiciest prime steaks and other mouth-watering dishes at Highlands Prime Steakhouse, located at Estancia, Ooh. Capital Commons in Pasig. And that's our regular what to enjoy and where to go list. Business and Leisure's weekly guide to destinations and places to go to enjoy the good life. Those places that we have shown are highly recommended, so do visit them soon. We are down to our last segment and this is dedicated to all the firearm enthusiasts out there. Here now is Sport Shoot. Sport Shoot is brought to you by Rock Island Armory, manufactured by Arms Corps Global Defense Incorporated. Welcome to Sport Shoot. This is a leisure segment for the gun enthusiast. This week, our featured handgun is this Remington RP9, and the manufacturers say that there are three important features that differentiate it from other handguns in the market. 
These three differences are capacity, grip circumference, and trigger. The Remington RP9 is a striker-fired and recoil-operated semi-automatic 9mm. It has a capacity of 18 plus 1 rounds. Its barrel is 4.5 inches and made of stainless steel. The RP9's overall length is 7.91 inches and its width is 1.27 inches. It has a height of 5.56 inches and weighs 1 pound 10.4 ounces. It is finished in PVD stainless steel or black oxide. For sights, it is dovetail, three dot, white ledge for rear and wind gauge adjacent. The trigger has been tested at six pounds and it retails in the US for $550. On the range, experts found decorations on the grip perfect for shooting. Recoil is extremely mild, probably due in part to the excellent grip and this was true even with rapid fire shooting. At 25 yards, groups were impressive with several 1.5 inches five shot clusters. Overall, the Remington RP9 averaged around two inches with every load. Although each of us has his own personal preferences, this striker fired handgun remains one of the more impressive ones in the market. That was the Remington RP9, our featured handgun for this week's sports shoot. And that sports shoot, business and leisure segment for the gun enthusiasts. Sports shoot is brought to you by Rock Island Armory, manufactured by Arms Corps Global Defense Incorporated. That was another remarkable firearm on spotlight on our segment geared towards all the gun enthusiasts. And we've got more to show in the future presentations of Sports Shoot. And with that, we end another edition of Business and Leisure. Thank you for staying with us. Also, don't forget to follow us in our social media accounts. Till the next time, this has been your host, Ray Butch Gamboa. Good business to all and enjoy a good life. <music>